Fundamental theorem of calculus is an extremely powerful theorem that establishes the relationship between differentiation and integration and also gives us a way to evaluate definite integrals without using Riemann sums or calculating areas. The theorem is comprised of two parts. The first part is stated here. This part establishes the relationship between differentiation and integration. Let's say small f of x is continuous on the closed interval CD. Then we have a defined function, which is capital F of x as a definite integral of f of t from the, from the point C to the point x. It is worth commenting on some of the key implications of this theorem. There is a reason it is called fundamental theorem of calculus. Not only does it establish a relationship between integral and derivative, but also it guarantees that any integrable function has an antiderivative. If you see the capital F here, it is given by the by an in, by a definite integral, and uh, f prime is small f here. So this theorem implies the existence of antiderivatives for continuous functions. We have a generalized version of fundamental theorem of calculus part one. This is called Leibniz rule. If the limits of integral are the functions, let's say a of x and b of x, instead of the constant c and the variable x. And if you want to differentiate this integral without computing, you first put the upper bound of integration into the function f and take the derivative of upper bound and subtract. You put the lower bound of integration, which is a of x, and multiply this by derivative of lower bound. This is called Leibniz rule. Now let's solve some problems for fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 and Leibniz rule. We can easily apply fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 to the first example. Look at the, the given integral. The boundaries of integral is from a number a to the variable x. We can directly apply the theorem. The answer of this example is cosine x. So we find the derivative of that integral without computing the integral. Of course, if you calculate first the integral and take the derivative with respect to x, you will find cosine x function. Now let's look at the second example. You take you want to take derivative of that integral with respect to x without computing the integral. Let's apply the theorem. Since the lower bound is 0, the upper bound is x, you can directly apply the theorem. The answer will be 1 over 1 plus x square, which is f of x, f of t. See, f is 1 over 1 plus t square. You just plug the variable x. You get the answer. Look at the third example. In the third example, as you see, the lower bound is a function, the upper bound is a number, so you cannot directly apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, you should modify this problem or you may apply Leibniz rule. So, how do we apply Leibniz rule? We first uh, plug the number 1 to the function instead of the variable t and multiply that function with the derivative of 1, which is 0. Let me write down. Derivative of 1, derivative of upper bound, which is 0, times e to the power. Actually, it's not needed to write, but let me first write to fully understand the solution. Minus derivative of lower bound, which is 6x, times I plug the variable 6, I plug the variable 3x squared into t, so I have e to the power 3x squared minus 1 divided by 3x squared. This is the final answer of this derivative question. 
I will solve some more problems about this part, part one fundamental theorem of calculus at the end of this lecture. Now let's look at the second part of the theorem. Second part of fundamental theorem of calculus is perhaps the most important theorem in calculus. The area of an entire curved region can be calculated by just evaluating an antiderivative at the first and last endpoints of an interval. This theorem states that if we can find an antiderivative for the integrand, then we can evaluate the definite integral by evaluating the antiderivative by evaluating the antiderivative at the end points of the interval and subtracting if f is a continuous function on that closed interval and capital f is any antiderivative of the given function the given continuous function then this definite integral is equal to you actually don't have to compute this integral if you know what is antiderivative of small f okay let's say capital e, capital f is one of the antiderivative of small f then in this case you just plug the endpoints of the fun of the interval then you can easily compute these definite integrals so let's look at the first question as an application of this theorem we have an absolute value function in the integrand okay this is 2x minus 10 and the, as you see 2x minus 10 is smaller than 0 when x is smaller than 5 and 2x minus 10 is greater than 0 when x is greater than 5 right so this integral must be written addition of two integrals integral from 3 to 5 2x minus 10 is negative right this is why we have to multiply by minus 2x minus 10 dx this is the first part plus from 5 to 6 when x is greater than 5 inside is positive so we directly write the inside of the function this is 2x minus 10 dx so now it's very easy to compute this integral i only ask this question what is antiderivative of 2x minus 10 or derivative of which function is 2x minus 10 let me first write this minus here derivative of which function is 2x minus 10 this is x square minus 10 x x is from 3 to 5 this is the first part this is the first integral i ask the same question derivative of which function is 2x minus 10 we have a plus this is again x square minus 10x and x is from 5 to 6. the rest is very easy if you calculate you will have 5 let's look at the second example it is about first type part one fundamental theorem of calculus it is requested to find derivative of f with respect to x here f is given as the addition of two integrals integral from 0 to x and from 0 to ln f of x i want to apply leibniz rule it is very useful theorem it's a very useful rule so let me write down the fun the Leibniz rule let's let's apply the Leibniz rule this is f prime is equal to f prime of x is equal to derivative of upper 
limit upper boundary is 1 times you have to plug x into t so you have x sine x minus derivative of 0 is 0 this is why I don't want to write the rest this is 0 plus second part derivative of second part derivative of ln f of x is f prime of x divided by f of x using the properties of derivative of ln times now I plug ln f of x into t so I have 2 times e to the power ln f of x so this is all let's simplify this expression this is equal to 1 times x sine x is x sine x minus 0 I don't write this plus f prime of x over f of x 2 times let me write 2 here and finally e to the power ln f of x what is e to the power ln f of x this is f of x now you can simplify this to f of x then you have you have f prime of x here and f prime of x here so if you take this to the right hand side of the equality you have f prime of x is equal to minus x sine x this is all again it is requested to find derivative of f which is given by an integral so i use the leibniz rule to find f prime f prime of x is equal to derivative of upper bound is cosine x times I write sine x instead of t in the given integrand. Okay, so I have ln instead of t. I have sine x ln sine x minus instead of t. I write sine square x divided by square root of instead of t. I have sine x plus ln sine x this is the first part of the Leibniz rule we have a minus in between minus derivative of lower bound is e to the power x times instead of t I should write e to the power x ln e to the power x is x itself minus t square instead of t square i should write e to the power x square which is e to the power 2x okay divided by square root of e to the power x instead of t plus ln e to the power x is x itself this is f prime okay this is all and the final question is nice find the critical points of f which is given by this integral integral from minus 3 to x okay so in order to find the critical points of f we need to find f prime and make it equal to 0 f prime is 0 you may apply fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 or Leibniz rule it's all, it's all up to you I prefer Leibniz rule uh, let's take derivative of upper bound which is 1 times then write x instead of t here arc tangent x square plus 4x plus 3 minus derivative of lower bound is 0 this is why I skip to write this part so how do we find the critical points of a function we make it equal to 0 and find try to find the values of x that make arctangent 0 domain of arctangent x 
domain of arctangent x is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, right? Okay, it's the first step of the solution. So we need to find y such that arctangent y arctangent y is equal to 0, right? So we need to find the y that makes arctangent 0, right? Okay, uh, and from this interval, on this interval, then y has to be 0 since the only point y in this interval that makes arctangent 0 is y equal to 0. This is why x square inside of the parenthesis must be 0. x square plus 4x plus 3 must be 0. x, x, 3, 1. In this case, we have x plus 3. x plus 1 is equal to 0. If and only if either x is minus 1 or x is minus 3 okay so when x is minus 1 or x is minus 3 f prime becomes 0 so two critical points of f prime are minus 1 and minus 3 this is all